Sam was relaxing watching TV when he got a phone call from his girlfriend Ginny. She said in an excited voice, Hi Sam, it's me. I just finished an absolutely amazing game. Well, I'm not sure could you even call it a game. It's more of a surprise or an amazing prize or something like that. I have the choice to nominate someone close to me to experience the same thing. Trust me, you'll love it. They gave me the rules. All you need to do is go down to the bus stop across the street and under the seat, under a stone, will be an envelope with instructions to you go to a place called the Red Room. But I know it's kind of weird at the start. You get taken in a cab and are blindfolded, so you don't know where you are going exactly. I have to admit, I was totally freaked out at that stage, but when I got to the Red Room, Sam interrupted Jenny. Jenny, are you high or something? What is going on? What is the Red Room? Okay, in the envelope you will see a questionnaire. You just fill it out and then follow the instructions to get brought to this room, which is called the Red Room. It's kind of strange though, because the room is all white. There is no red in it. But I was asked about what was my favourite food, movies, books, etc. And the room was full of everything I love. And there are loads of shopping trolleys outside the room to me carry it. Trust me, you will absolutely love it. I'll show you what I have when I get home. Sam said, You're telling me that I can go there right now to the bus stop and fill the questionnaire. Ginny said, Yes, right now, because you don't know what time you're going to be collected. Sam said, Okay babe, I'm on it right now. I'll see you after this freaking weird surprise you're talking about. A few minutes later Sam walked to the bus stop and sure enough there was a stone with an envelope underneath. He knew he couldn't fill out the questionnaire at the bus stop as he needed something to lean on and he had no pin so he brought it back to his house and filled it out. He was asked to go to a quiet road near his house and get picked up outside a gate in an hour. He was there waiting and a car pulled up and a person with a face covered said, Welcome to the Red Room where your dreams become a reality. You don't have to pay one cent for loads of things you could only dream to afford to buy. There will be lots of more surprises waiting for you in the Red Room. Sam was shown into the car and blindfolded and a half hour later his blindfold was taken off in a white room. The white room was full of everything he loved. Games consoles, expensive TVs and lots more. He then heard a voice come out of a speaker that said, Hello and welcome to the Red Room. Thanks very much for accepting the offer to enter the Red Room. Everything you see was chosen from the answers to your questionnaire. So we surmise you are very happy with your gifts. You now have the honour to ring a friend and nominate them to enter the Red Room. Just simply tell us their location and we will give you a meeting point to then pick up their envelope. Sam said happily, I nominate my cousin Fred please, he lives just around the corner from me. The voice spoke again, perfect, all you need to do is call your friend using your cell phone and let him know about the game and tell him to look under the same place as you did by your bus stop. Sam was very happy to make the call and when he hung up he heard something from the wall. He wondered what it was, then suddenly he heard gunshots and he was shot to bits. His blood splattered all over the white room and he wasn't alive to find out why the white room was called the Red Room.
Thanks for watching the Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. I'm safe here. They definitely wouldn't think to look for me here. I can't tell you where here is, because they might get to you, and thereby get to me. But you're part of me, so basically know where here is. You're in my head, so if you delve deep enough and focus intently, you can see where I am. But there's no need for such. I'm safe, and so you are too. They're dangerous, and our safety is my top concern. I can't let them get to us. I've seen what they're capable of, and it's not fun looking. The blood streamed down the sidewalk. The exit sight of the bullet looked like a small creature had crawled out of his head. It was a gaping hole. His brown hair matted to what was left of his skull by the scarlet mess. His scrawny arms lay motionless at his side, covered in dirt accumulated on the walkway, blood seeping into his t-shirt. A stain like that definitely won't come out. A small crowd had gathered and looked on, in a mixture of awe and disgust. It was such a grotesque horror, committed on such a beautiful day. Rather warm for autumn, but nonetheless still an overall great day. Besides, for the man with his brain painting the sidewalk, it definitely wasn't a great day for him. The crowd spoke in low murmurs, no one able to make sense of the atrocious act committed in the city centre in broad daylight. Cars continued to drive by, each stopping briefly to try and catch a glimpse of the drama evidently unfolding on the sidewalk. The buildings enclosing the street on both sides seemed to blend in to the background. There was no one to focus on but him. He must have known too much about them. This is what happens when you know too much. This is why you need to protect us. He was probably a father, computer technician, or something equally boring. And now look at him. The ambulance sirens caused everyone to divert their attention. Strange no police had shown up. I'm sure many a concerned civilian had called it in. Now only an ambulance. Curiosity killed the cat. This was my first encounter with their stronghold on the public. Crazy, huh? A fire in the building I lived in was another danger alert. The fire killed one of the guys I knew who stayed on the third floor. He was a pretty cool guy. We'd played a few pickup games of basketball together at the community centre courts a few times. He too must have known too much about them. Incredible the lengths they'd go to to get rid of him. Starting a fire in an apartment building where hundreds of people live. Strangely enough, he was the only dead in the fire. The fire department issued a statement that the lit cigarette he fell asleep with was the cause of the fire. I was among the crowd outside the building, being tendered to by paramedics, when they wheeled his charred corpse out the smoking remnants of a communal home. His once white skin was now a very reddish pink in most parts. The rest of him was crispy black, blood seeped out through the cracks in the now hardened skin and gave colour to the white sheet that did a poor job of concealing the abomination he had become. I may not be a smart man, but I know better to believe the nonsense story the fire department gave about the cause of the fire. It wasn't a cigarette, it was them. The crispy man had known too much, and they dealt with him. The embers of the fire glowed dimly in the darkness of the night. It was almost beautiful. The flashing lights of the fire truck and shouts and cries of the now homeless people faded into the background. They had struck again. My third and final encounter with their destructive power was by far the worst. 
It was the boot up my ass I needed to get us out to safety. It was all the confirmation I needed to know. They posed a real threat to us. I didn't know the guy, but whoever he was, he didn't deserve to die the way he did. I was taking a walk through the park to clear my mind of all the negativity and stress I'd been inflicted with, when my thoughts were dragged instantly back to the park. I had stumbled and nearly tripped into almost dark park. I looked down annoyed to see what had caused my stumble. There in my path was the abdomen of a man. His abdomen was dressed impeccably, so it was fair to assume his grand night had come to an abrupt end. I was at a loss for words and didn't know what to do. My first thought was to locate the rest of his body, leaving the abdomen donned in a tuxedo jacket. I walked slowly down the path, scanning left and right for parts of the man. Boy did I find them. He had been completely ripped apart. Strewn on both sides of the path were his hands, the rest of his arms, his feet in what looked like expensive dress shoes, and to the legs. The head, however, was nowhere to be found. Unperturbed, I continued my search. The path led me to the gate of a park, where my search proved fruitful. Mounted on the spikes above the gate was the stranger's head. They had no respect for the dead. How could they violate the man like this? All because he knew too much. Leaving the head on the gate, I left in a hurry. No point summoning the police. They would not get involved with these people. Now, do you see why I must do all I can to ensure our safety? These people know no bounds. They have no regard for the law or human life. All this debt because of the knowledge people had acquired. Knowledge is power, but in this case, it also grounds for debt. Unfortunately for us, I am knowledgeable. As I'm sure you can guess, we're next on the hit list. I won't tell you exactly what it is I know, so if they get to me first, they might spare you for your ignorance. You must be wondering why I fear for you, because as I said, you're part of me. You know what I know. But upon my debt, the bond might break. Therefore, you won't know it anymore, thus being spared. That however is worst case scenario, I would rather just keep us both alive. Do you hear that? The buzzing? I think they found me. We've been compromised. Sorry, old pal. This is the end of the road. The door is opening now. Oh God, how are they getting in? The door has no handles, so how? Oh God. The door opened, and the nurses walked into the padded room. He sat on the floor, rocking back and forth, shouting, straight jacket sitting tightly around him. Every time he was scheduled to get his medicine, he did this, screaming and shouting about them and knowledge. Once sedated, the nurses put the clozapine in his mouth and gave him enough water to wash them down. They then checked to make sure he swallowed the medication. Anthony had been admitted into the psychiatric ward of St. Bernard's Hospital over three years ago. He was found wandering the streets covered in blood by police after an extensive manhunt was launched following the deaths of three unrelated individuals. Brutal deaths. All found to be carried out by Anthony. He was sent to trial and proven extremely mentally unstable, earning him a lifetime stay in the padded room. The mind it's a terrible thing to waste. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. There were four random strangers chosen to share in a prize of $100,000 if any one of them solved a puzzle. It started with a simple phone call. Sarah was in her office when she got the call. 
Hello, this is a genuine request. You're under no obligation to say yes, but you and three other people are invited to take part in a puzzle. If you or any of the rest of the participants solve the puzzle, ye will all share in the prize of $100,000. That's giving ye all exactly $25,000 each. That is a nice pay pack for just a few minutes work. If you would like to participate, then all you have to do is arrive at Madison Hotel on Grove Street at 6 p.m. this evening. There is an elevator on the ground floor. Just wait outside that elevator for the door to open. Then please enter with the rest of the participants. You will all know that ye are there for the puzzle, don't worry. The same phone call arrived for Jack, who was in the gym working out. Tony got his call while out walking, and Mary got her call while watching TV. They all agreed to take part in the puzzle. That evening at 6pm, they were all waiting outside the elevator, waiting for it to open, excited with the chance of pocketing $25,000 each if any of them solved the puzzle. Suddenly the elevator doors opened, and they all stepped inside. The elevator started going up, and a voice came through the speaker. Hello, player. Thank you very much for taking part in this puzzle that enables you to have a chance of winning $25,000 each. The question to the puzzle is simple. The floors of this hotel have various occupants at different times. Sometimes, but other times not as much. But what button in this elevator is pressed the most? If you can't answer by the time we reach the top floor, you will be shown the answer on the display in the elevator, but unfortunately you will lose out in the money. This is the most important rule. If you give a wrong answer, you will all lose the game. Good luck. The elevator started going up to the top floor. Everyone started talking about it trying to solve the puzzle. It sounded so complicated, especially when there were different numbers of people staying in different floors at different times. Everyone knew there was 15 floors in the hotel, so Sarah shouted first floor before it hit 15. They all hoped the answer was right. Then suddenly the voice came back and said, I am very sorry. You were very close, but the answer is ground floor. Because everyone has to go to the ground floor. As promised, we will show you the answer, which is everyone has to go to the ground floor. Suddenly the elevator made a bang and started falling faster and faster and everyone in it started screaming until it crashed to the floor and they were all killed. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Mandy was an inspiring writer who had an agent with interest in a manuscript she had wrote. The manuscript showed potential, but wasn't publishing worthy were her agent's words. Mandy felt a surge of excitement at the very fact her agent was ready and willing to give her a chance. But her agent stressed 
that she would have to come up with a whole new manuscript that proved she was a writer that had the talent to write a novel that had the potential to be a bestseller. Mandy was a carer to a very ill world-famous writer. His name was Arnold Starr. He had a string of best-selling novels, and lots of them were turned into movies. Arnold kept telling Mandy that he had his best work hidden away, and only she knew about it, but asked her to give the manuscript to his agent in the event of him dying. He gave her a key code to get into the room that the manuscript was hidden in, and he promised her that no one knew about the manuscript, not even his agent. One summer evening, Arnold passed away peacefully in his bed. Mandy had did exactly what Arnold had asked of her, and put in the code and retrieved his manuscript. She was about to call his agent, when a crazy idea entered her head. What if she kept the manuscript? and gave it to her agent. That night in her own home, she rang her agent and said, Hi, I have great news. I am finished my manuscript and I am so happy with it. I took your advice and tried my best to prove to you that you're right, that I have the talent to write a potential bestseller. After the call, Mandy settled down with a glass of wine and read the manuscript. It was exciting and gripping from the opening line. On the last page, she was surprised as she read, there was a spirit in the house of a girl called Mandy. They wanted revenge for a wrong she did, to get even from something she took belonged to them. Mandy thought she heard a noise in her stairs, but as frightened as she was, by feeling a cold sting in the air, and what she had just read, she felt forced to read on. So she did. The words staring up at her were, the noise stopped in the stairs, and the spirit knocked on the door. Suddenly the door swung open, and Mandy was shocked to see Arnold standing right at the door. He looked right at her, and his stare made her drop dead. His spirit disappeared. A few days later, Mandy's agent found the manuscript, and about a year later, it was published as Mandy's first and only book, and it went on to become a number one bestseller, which was always Mandy's dream. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. I was new in town, and had just found a new job in the local diner. I didn't mind the late hours, and plus it was extra money for me to buy the latest computer games and style I wanted to buy. I loved shopping, so as I worked in the diner, I just felt happy about getting my wage pack on Friday. I hopped on the bus to get my bus ride home, and as I got into the bus, I spotted a creepy looking guy sitting in the back. It was late and I was on my own but at least the driver was on the bus with me, and this creepy man also. It wasn't just me and him. I felt weird still. I felt like the guy's eyes were piercing through me, even though I couldn't see him. I just tried to relax and enjoy the bus ride home as much as I could in this strange situation. I then told myself, wait, I'm just on a bus with a weird looking guy who is probably harmless. Nothing has happened. I looked behind and felt a shiver run through me, as I could have sworn he moved up a seat closer to me. I couldn't be sure, but when I turned around again, I knew for certain 
as he was right behind me, sitting in the seat, smiling with such a sinister smile. I turned around and ignored him, and didn't look back. When I got home I could see my dad's paper resting on the sofa, and I got such a fright when I saw the same creepy man's face staring up at me, and reading the headline it said, the man had been killed by a bus on the exact same bus route I took. I had then realised the man who was on the bus with me was a ghost. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Hello, my name is Martin. Me and my wife just got married. We just bought a beautiful house. I have everything in my life going good for me, besides one thing, and that is my sleep paralysis demon. My wife tells me to go to see a psychiatrist, but I know that it won't help, because whatever is causing me to have these vivid hallucinations when I'm half asleep, I doubt anyone with a title of psychiatrist or psychologist etc would be able to make them go away. Each night I go to sleep, I can't move, and before I know it I see the demon hovering over me, as if he is really there with me, hovering over me in my bed. It is so realistic. One night I just had to put my mind to rest, to at least me see nothing was really happening besides what's in my head. I didn't tell my wife, because she would just say it's more of my paranoia. What I did was set up a hidden camera and filmed myself sleeping. I set it up to only record when there was movement, so when I watched it the next day, it only took a couple of minutes. I didn't have to watch hours of footage to look for something strange. But when I did see something, something more than strange, I couldn't believe my eyes. When I saw someone in black inject something into my arm and then go over me in the bed with a mask, I was looking forward to tell my wife that I wasn't paranoid. I couldn't wait till she came home. When I told her she couldn't believe it, she told me wait in the room while she checked the rest of the house in case anyone was around, and then she would call the police. When she went out, something didn't feel right, so I followed her and heard my wife say on the phone, that stupid bastard recorded himself sleeping, he knows he is set up. She has explained everything to me, and now I am stuck in this room with only a pin and a pad for company, and I am writing this letter in case someday someone finds it. I am hungry, and she is not going to let me out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. What is the reason she's doing this, and why she's doing it? It is because she's got another man that she wanted to drive me mad, to drive me away from my home, to him move in, to me be locked up in an asylum while she was living such a great life. I hope I will get out of this room someday, and I hope it will be very soon. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content.